This document comprises Phase 1 of the Hayward Fault Initiative. The goal of the initiative is to promote risk reduction locally by providing updated information on the consequences of a Hayward Fault earthquake and actively encourage risk reduction programs. This initiative builds on the 1996 EERI document Scenario for a Magnitude 7.0 Earthquake on the Hayward Fault. This document was developed and is being published by the Earthquake Engineering Research Institute, Northern California Chapter, with funds from the U.S. Geological Survey National Earthquakes Hazard Reduction Program. At the 1995 EERI Annual Meeting, a day-long symposium addressed the challenges of a major urban earthquake. Sixteen presenters discussed aspects of a Hayward Fault earthquake, from the seismology to the social and economic impacts on the San Francisco Bay Area. The symposium presentations were subsequently published in Scenario for Magnitude 7.0 Earthquake on the Hayward Fault. The 2010 update of the Hayward Fault Scenario document follows the chapter format of the original and is available online by link on the EERI website. In each of the document's chapters, the significant points from the 1995 report are summarized before updated information is provided. Where possible, original chapter authors were interviewed and many assisted as editors on the new document. The 2010 document contains a new chapter on fire following earthquake. The comparison of where we were in 1995 and where we are today is an important process. It illustrates the trajectory of our work as earthquake professionals. It further identifies the effort, education, and policy decisions necessary to maintain that trajectory. This is a map of the San Francisco Bay Area with the approximate location of the Hayward Fault. Chapter 1 of the 1995 scenario document opens with a quote, There is no problem so big, so important, you can't run away from it. To give a compelling reason why the Bay Area cannot run away from earthquake preparedness, a brief sketch of the Bay Area then and now is provided. In 1995, the Bay Area was ranked as the fourth largest economy in the nation. Since that time, despite challenges such as affordable housing and traffic, the San Francisco Bay Area grew from 6.5 to 7.4 million people with an estimated 3.5 million people employed in the region. Today, the region's economy is estimated at $300 billion and still leads the nation in knowledge-based industries. The Bay Area Council credits the region as one of the most resilient economies in the nation. However, they acknowledge that there is a potential for huge economic losses in a major earthquake that would affect the national and global economies. The East Bay Municipal Utilities District, or East Bay MUD, is the primary provider of water and sewage delivery services to over 1.2 million people in the San Francisco East Bay. Collected in the foothill of the Sierras to the east, freshwater pipelines cross the Hayward Fault at two critical locations. In 1995, East Bay Mud was developing their seismic improvement program to strengthen the water system over 10 years at a cost of $189 million. Progress on that plan includes the following. The seismic strengthening of the McCalmney No. 3 aqueduct is completed in 2005. The seismic improvement program for distribution systems completed in 2006. Completion of the Claremont Tunnel seismic retrofit in 2007, represented by this figure, and seismic upgrades for San Pablo Dam started in 2008. Since 1971, the Bay Area Rapid Transit System has grown to 360,000 daily riders. The system provided a critical backup for the damaged Bay Bridge following the 1989 earthquake. In November 2004, Bay Area voters passed Measure AAA which authorized the BART district to issue bonds for $980 million to fund earthquake safety improvements to BART facilities. The BART seismic improvement program includes relocation of BART headquarters, retrofit of 22 miles of aerial or elevated tracks, and retrofit of 19 stations. Five station retrofit projects are in construction. Extensive evaluation of the Transbay tube and reclassification of the retrofit from a top priority to a lower priority in the system-wide program. Finally, after careful study, BART determined that there is no practical retrofit for the Berkeley Hills Tunnel and has instead developed an emergency response program. Marine facilities are at serious risk for earthquake-induced liquefaction, ground spreading, and embankment failure. Structures can be damaged by uneven ground settlement and the amplification of ground motions due to soft soil. In 2000, the Port of Oakland Maritime authorized an $11 million wharf and embankment strengthening program. 
Their intent is to remain in business and operational following a major earthquake. Between 1995 and 2009, the Caltrans seismic retrofit program included the following. Phase one retrofit of single column overpass bridges was completed in 2000. Multi-column elements were retrofit next. Completion of the Richmond San Rafael retrofit, completion of the Venetia and Carquinas replacement. And of course, the replacement of the Bay Bridge Eastern Span is the most visible element of their seismic program. The new bridge is expected to open in 2013. Firefighting organizations are an important element of the emergency response to earthquakes. They provide the first line of defense for both medical emergencies and fire suppression. Since 1995, the cities of San Francisco, Oakland, Berkeley, Hayward, Fremont, and others have all completed major seismic retrofit projects or replacement of their fire stations. In 2007, study prepared for the California Healthcare Foundation analyzed the challenge to implement SB 1953 using historical rates of construction and permit filings with OSHPD. The most important finding was that about half of the non-life safety hospital infrastructure will not be compliant with the 2008-2013 deadlines for SB 1953 and may not be able to comply with the final 2030 deadline. SB 1953 was an act passed by California legislation that required all hospitals in the state to reach life safety by the year 2030. As of July 2010, 16 hospitals in Alameda County were reported as having critical care buildings with an SPC-1 rating. An SPC-1 rating means that the structure is considered hazardous and at risk of collapse or significant loss of life in the event of an earthquake. Bay Area hospitals are shown on this Google Earth map. Progress has been made on the seismic retrofit or replacement of vulnerable school buildings. California Assembly Bill AB 300 created a list of potentially dangerous school buildings. State and local bond measures have provided some support for local school districts, including West Contra Costa, Berkeley, Albany, and Piedmont. However, evaluation and retrofit or replacement remains a voluntary effort. This is a school that was constructed to replace an older, vulnerable school located in the near field zone of the Hayward Fault. The 1995 report identified the University of California, Berkeley, shown here, as a campus with significant risk. Progress has been made at the University of California, Berkeley, which straddles the fault. The Seismic Action Plan for Facilities Enhancement and Renewal, or SAFER program, provides a comprehensive approach to seismic safety on the UC Berkeley campus. Construction began on the Memorial Stadium project and will be completed by the 2012 football season. Any contemplation of housing damage in the Hayward scenario quake reveals the prevalence of very vulnerable soft story construction and multifamily structures. Preliminary inventories of soft story structures revealed 22 buildings in Fremont, 400 buildings in Berkeley, 350 buildings in San Leandro, and just under 1,500 buildings in Oakland. Though many of the buildings on the lists may not be true soft story structures, the numbers indicate a widespread problem with multifamily residential buildings. In 1995, the Hayward Fault scenario was expected to create $16 billion in building damage and a $4 billion hit to the economy. Today, Risk Management Solutions, or RMS, estimates the losses from building damage for the scenario earthquake at $186 billion, with just under $22 billion of that damage insured. Note that residential losses account for 48% of the total. There was no chapter on post-earthquake fire in the 1995 Hayward Fault scenario. Fires generally follow all earthquakes that significantly shake a human settlement, but are usually only a serious problem in large metropolitan areas with densely spaced wood buildings. The string of dense wood frame residential communities bordering the Hayward Fault perfectly exemplifies such a high-risk area, especially since many of the neighborhoods near the fault are heavily covered in vegetation vulnerable to urban wildland interface fires. Despite the improvements highlighted in this presentation, there is more to accomplish. The enormous cost of achieving hospital seismic safety has delayed the enforcement of SB 1953. The effort to create seismic resiliency in multifamily housing has had limited success, and with the inventory of soft story buildings and with a few voluntary and one mandatory soft story retrofit ordinance enacted in the East Bay. 
unknown numbers of school buildings have structural and non-structural safety hazards. In 1995, earthquake engineer Tom Tobin encouraged earthquake professionals to be agents of change, moving from the conference room to the boardroom, city council chambers, and to the halls of the legislature. Tobin stressed that earthquake risk is not so overwhelming that we can't start reducing it. This document makes the same call to action today. I would like to call on the earthquake professionals in the Bay Area and others from organizations that they represent to be agents of change, to take this information to conference rooms, to boardrooms, to city council chambers, and to the halls of the legislature.